Hey guys, we are back. And after the last few videos, I'm sure your feathers are quite ruffled as Nintendo fans. But hey, uh, <laughs> that's just the way life is. But anyway, in this video, we're going to talk about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And the last week or so, all the reviews have came in, including Jim Sterling, who has, of course, made a huge impact quote-unquote impact on the uh, Metacritic rating, bringing it down from a 9.8 to a 9.7, giving the game a 7 out of 10. And of course, he has been throwing all kinds of hatred, and his relationship with Nintendo has been well documented in that he basically does not get along with them very well. And he has caused a lot of controversy over the past few years on his YouTube channel and his website with his very strong opinions, and people love to hate him, and people love to like him, so on and so forth. But we'll get to that uh, in just a moment. But I want to talk about the review scores for this game. And there's some interesting things that people may have not noticed about these perfect scores for Breath of the Wild. Basically, when the game first was released on uh, March 3rd, you saw all those reviews pop up. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, perfect score, perfect score. Now, while the reviews did say that the game was not perfect, they did point out that the game was basically close to it, right? And a lot of things such as frame rate, while they were touched upon briefly in a lot of those reviews, they were kind of glossed over as not being that big of a deal and not being a hindrance to gameplay for the Switch version of the game. Now this is only in regards to the Switch version. Now since the time of the game's release, we have seen various instances where people have experienced stuttering in the frame rate so badly that the game will actually freeze and I have video evidence of this in the Switch version of the game and it was highlighted in, in one of these reviews and in fact in the Jim Sterling review he also stated that the game freezes from time to time later on in the game especially when you attack bigger enemies and it was highlighted in other people's playthroughs as well on NeoGAF for example people have stated that when you face certain big enemies later on in the game after you do an attack and the enemy falls over doing its animation, the game freezes or pauses to, I guess, calculate the animation and then the enemy does fall down. But it has been noticed that the game will freeze from time to time during those instances. Others have also reported that in the Switch version of the game, the game will drop to about 1 to 2 frames per second in Hyrule Castle at certain parts of the game later on. So these are very serious performance issues that were glossed over and not reported on in a lot of reviews to the game. Now I want to make it clear that I love the game, and personally my review of the game so far would be a 9 out of 10. I haven't finished the game yet. But there are some issues with the game that I have that I will highlight later on in this video. But so far, I think the game is outstanding. One of the best Zellas I've ever played. 9 out of 10 so far. So getting back to what I was saying, I'm going to play you a portion of two different video reviews talking about the frame rate of this game. Now, pay attention closely to this. Breath of the Wild's anime-inspired art style is colorful and remarkably lively. And the brief frame rate hiccups and pop in that show up from time to time never significantly soured my gameplay. And I still managed to come across things I haven't seen before. I'll easily spend 50 more tracking down its fascinating moments. The amount of freedom and the large scale of Hyrule come at a price, though. On the Switch version, when docked, there are serious frame rate issues in certain parts of the game. These problems happen most often in dense forest environments, but they occur in just about any type of area, from the plains to the top of snowy mountains. In some cases, it's so bad that the game is virtually unplayable until the problem subsides. The frame rate issues are frequent enough that you can't ignore them either. It's the only serious blemish on an otherwise stellar open world experience. Breath of the Wild is a landmark game that's hopefully just the start of an amazing future for Link's continuing adventures. And there you have Easy Allies, who is well respected, and their review highlighted that it was a major concern, the frame rate problems of this game, and it highlighted the frame drops and the freezing of Breath of the Wild on the Switch version. Now, IGN's version with Jose Otero didn't highlight that at all, and he said basically the frame rate didn't bother him. I thought this was very interesting because it's kind of hard to ignore that big of a frame rate drop, especially if you're playing the game fully. So that kind of raises some questions, and I could see now why a lot of people were questioning these reviews on if they were biased or not. I'm not saying that is the case in IGN's review, but I am saying that it's kind of questionable that the frame rate was looked over that much when it was that big of an issue for Easy Allies, and many other people as well, including Jim Sterling. He said the game does freeze, and many other people who have played the game 
said the game does in fact freeze. So in regards to reviewing this game, it brings up the question on are these websites reviewing the game with the correct criteria? Are they reviewing the game based on that it's Zelda only and not comparing it to anything else? Or are they reviewing the game based on it being just another video game and they have to weigh it fairly and accordingly in compared to the other games that are similar to it in its genre? Because if websites like IGN and other sites who basically gloss over the frame rate problem are giving it perfect scores, they are ignoring something in their own guidelines, is my point. Because IGN and all these other websites, they do review games based on graphics and performance, sound, gameplay, presentation, control, fun factor, all these things weigh into their score. So if you're giving a game a perfect score, and you're saying that, oh, these graphics and frame rate don't matter, then you are breaking your own review guidelines as a website. And I think that is wrong, if you are doing that. So if you're ignoring those issues in the game and you're ignoring your own guidelines, then I think the reviews do deserve to be questioned. And I think that is the point that a lot of these people who are complaining about these perfect scores are talking about. The frame rate is unacceptable in certain areas of the game. And if you have experienced it yourself, it does detract from the gameplay. It's unavoidable. The game actually stops and takes you out of your experience, basically, that you're playing in. And of course, you could say it doesn't bother you and everything like that. That's fine. If it doesn't bother you, that is 100% okay. But I'm not talking about us, like, you know, the fans playing the game. If it doesn't bother you, oh, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the game. Great. I'm talking about websites who review the game. They have a responsibility to report these issues. So if they're not reporting these issues, you're assuming that the game doesn't have these frame rate problems. Oh yeah, it has frame rate issues where it drops down a little bit to 20 frames per second, but a lot of websites didn't say anything about freezing, guys. That is a bigger issue. So if that is the case, the game automatically would not deserve a perfect score. That doesn't say anything about how great the game is as far as the core gameplay is concerned. I think the game is great, but in my opinion, it's not deserving of a perfect score when taking into consideration some flaws that it does in fact have. Now, like I said before, I give it a nine out of 10, and the reason for that is, personally, I think the frame rate and the voice acting, especially for one of the main characters in the game, I won't give it away, but one of the main characters in the game has really bad voiceover. So for me, I would take off a half a point just for that, for the frame rate and for the voice acting. And I would take off a half a point for some of the gameplay aspects that I don't really like personally. But that, of course, varies from gamer to gamer. But personally, I don't like how the inventory is set up in Breath of the Wild. I think when you pick up a weapon, uh, say you you know fight five different skeletons at a time and they all drop their bone arm and you pick up all five of their bone arms and put it in your inventory and in breath of the wild each of those bone arms take up a slot in your inventory so it's not like a game like monster hunter for example if you pick up five of something it creates a slot and it says the number five on it so you have five of that right there and you can store a lot more items so granted there are ways to upgrade your inventory slots later on in Breath of the Wild, but the game takes up a lot of your time just managing inventory. So just about an hour into the game, you're gonna fill up your inventory really quickly. What ends up happening is, is that after every other battle or so, you have to stop and manage your inventory and drop items and replace items and all because these individual items are exactly the same, but they take up different slots of your inventory and your weapon slot. Now for your items items, like you know, your apples and things you consume, they all have number slots, so they're all you can get like five or ten different apples all in one slot. I think they could have improved that aspect in Breath of the Wild and made the inventory a lot more robust and have the items take up one slot for each different type of item you have. I think that would be a lot easier to manage your inventory that way. And I know it was a gameplay decision by the team to go ahead and do it that way, to try it out, to get people to experiment with many different weapons. But I think there could have been a little bit more balance there. So for me, in that aspect, that brings it down a half a point. So for now, I haven't beat the game, of course. The game was like a 9 out of 10 for me. I think it's an outstanding game with beautiful landscapes, beautiful exploration. It's just a lot of fun to explore and just get lost in the world, you know what I mean? But there are some issues there that don't make it a perfect game, in my opinion. Now, as far as Jim Sterling is concerned, he did explain why he gave the game the rating that he did pretty well, even though... Quite honestly, it may have been biased because of his relationship with Nintendo. That's up for you to decide, of course. But he did explain that he absolutely hates 
the weapon durability aspect of that game and he gave all kinds of reasons for it. So hey, you know, he didn't like that aspect but he still gave it a 7 out of 10 which is quote unquote good for that game. Obviously it's a lot lower than what everyone else has been giving so of course it's making all kinds of news. But that's what I wanted to point out about Zelda is that when you rate a game a 10 out of 10 and you actually are breaking the rules of your own website and ignoring certain things, certain problems of the game, I think that's questionable and I think it needs to be brought up. But despite that excellent, outstanding game, I love Breath of the Wild so far. Before I go in the video, I do want to address a question that I got on Twitter from Redtail. I want to say thank you very much, Redtail, for sending me this question. He says, yo, real quick, I love your videos, man. You always keep it real when it comes to what's going on with Nintendo. I need to ask you something. Do you think you can make a future video discussing your thoughts on what Nintendo should do or what will happen in the future for the Switch? I think myself and many others subscribed to you would love to hear your thoughts on that. I'm definitely a Nintendo diehard. Hey, so am I. We have something in common. <laughs> and I'm seeing all these issues going on regarding the Switch. Personally, I haven't had all the issues other people are having with their consoles besides it freezing two times and playing for a long amount of time. I do believe in all the issues other people are having, and I see a lot of issues with the console myself, like no browser, frame rate problems, etc. I'm extremely worried about these hardware issues hurting the lifespan, sales, or reputation of the console. Do you think Nintendo would have to cancel the Switch or anything crazy like that? I'm super worried and I feel like no one has been discussing what Nintendo's next move should be. Hope you consider this for a video topic. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you very much, Redtail, for your question and for your comments. I appreciate that very much. and. First of all, I would say don't worry about it. I think Nintendo is going to fix all the issues that people are worried about with it for the Switch. I think anything hardware related is going to be completely fixed rather quickly, whether or not it's in firmware updates or whether or not they send out revisions to the Joy-Cons. I think they are going to be fixing these issues extremely fast. And I want to make something clear that some of you in the comment section in my last video got totally wrong, is that I never said that the Switch hardware was defective and failing the most in Nintendo history. I never said that. I'm not going to go over the list yet again for like a third time. There's no console Nintendo has ever released that has had more different type of issues than what we are seeing with the Switch. I'm not saying that this is the most defective units Nintendo has ever had. No, I'm not saying that because we don't have that information. So I'll make that very clear to you guys that I did not say that. But getting back to Red Tail's comment, yes, Nintendo will definitely fix anything wrong with the Switch. If you have anything wrong with your system, call them up and hopefully they will replace it for you. I'm sure they will. They're great on their customer support. My main point in my last few videos is that no one seemed to care or recognize the issues with this system that are being reported from Nintendo YouTube content creators. So that was the only thing I was trying to get across. But I do think these issues will be fixed, and I'm very optimistic that they will be. Now, in regards to your concerns about the future of the Switch, Redtail, say if the Switch, you know, fails or dies or whatever, right? That's your concern. Now, if that were to happen, I guarantee you that Nintendo already has a backup plan for different hardware to be released if that were to happen. Nintendo is not stupid, so they have never really solely put all their resources into one console since the original NES, and that was only for about four years when they released the Game Boy, for example. So if the Switch does become a, some kind of disaster, which of course we don't want any system to become a disaster for any company, but if for some reason it does, I guarantee you Nintendo will have a backup plan. And we already know that the Switch is lacking third-party support, yet again, for the second console in a row. The Wii had it, Wii U didn't have it, this console doesn't have it so far. So I guarantee you, Nintendo already has a plan in motion in case something does happen. And again, Nintendo, multi-billion dollar company, they have a whole bunch of resources to release a ton of great first party content on the Switch to help boost sales in this first year even further, of course, because it's off to a great start, but to boost sales even further later on, let down the line, so then third party can see the sales momentum and then join up. But if for some reason that doesn't happen, like I said, don't worry about it, they're gonna be just fine. I'm extremely optimistic about Nintendo's future, guys. You, you may not realize that. I have heard information behind the scenes that, you know, Nintendo does have plenty to fall back on if something does go wrong. So you guys don't worry about a thing. Either way, Nintendo's going to be okay. Trust me. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section about all this Zelda controversy with reviews. Bad reviews, good reviews, so-so reviews. Tell me what you think. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to you guys very soon in the next video. Take care.